Time is moving on. Oh, yeah. Jack, hmm? I'm trying to concentrate. And using semaphore won't speed things up. Look, I'm supposed to be in Mullet's office in a minute, and so is she. Don't bother, I'll answer it. Frost. Gov, DS Marsh. My car's packed up. And what is your estimated time of arrival? I'm on the bus. About 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Why her? Hmm? Why her? Of all the people, why is Mullet having her transferred here? Hmm? Answer me that. I'll leave it out, Lewis. Don't get gobby, mate. You're a what, Palmer? You're going to talk me to death. Oh, calm it down, Johnny boy. Slow, Jono! <laughs> you think that was clever, do you? Yeah, it was a laugh. You've got to start the day with a laugh, babes. Otherwise, you end up like miserable old sods. Like this lot. Wait, set me up, bag, mate. Yeah. Oh, oh, get me the bag. Got their love. Shut up, please! Police! Enough! Hey, are you deaf? I said, Ow! Come on, get off my bus. Come on, get off my bus. Look what you did. This ain't an ordinary coat, mate. It's my brother's. Get off the bus. Are you gonna make me? I'll get you for this. It's your mate. Get off. A fat lot of good you were. I don't want you at Denton. It's best you should know that from the start. It wasn't my choice either. Yeah, well, as long as we understand each other. Oh, perfectly. You cross me again, and I'll boot your rear right back to where it came from. In which case, I'll have to bring charges against you again. Gov. Sergeant Marsh is but a token of the harassment and fear gangs of youths have inflicted on innocent bystanders over recent months. For the next uh, four weeks, I'm instigating Operation Self-Containment. Zero tolerance on the streets of Denton. Operation Roundup, you should have called it, with a bit of branding with permanent dye. That wouldn't gone amiss either. Hmm? And someone stealing credit cards, which is another priority although we don't have any leads yet. Uh, George and I are doing the rounds of known offenders, sir. Denton and Operation Self-Containment will lead the way with uh, due care and diligence. So, I'd like to welcome you, Sergeant Marsh, and uh, we all look forward to working with you. Thank you, sir. I had no choice, Jack. She's an experienced officer and we need someone. Besides, she's leaving in a month's time to go into the private sector. What a cushy security job, right? Eh? 
In a modern office, with loads of holidays and bags of money? God, why would anybody want to do that? Can't she go now? Just live with it, Jack, and work with her. Let uh, bygones be bygones. Right, I want you to clear George's desk while he and I do all the legwork. I think I'm of more use to Mr. Mullet out of the office. Except you're working for me now, and I want this desk cleared. You know, you can go on scoring points all day long. It's not going to help. Look, just do your job, will you, and keep this zipped. God, you're never going to forget it, are you? No, I'm not. I was suspended from duty because you blabbed about the case that I was working on. Fifteen years ago! And you jeopardised more than the case. You were cutting corners. You didn't follow procedure. I got the results. Yes, you risked an officer's life to get your result. You take shortcuts. You, you screw it up for everyone. Well, not for me. I'm not having your muddy paws messing up my career, thank you. George and I are going to be out of the office all day. Don't you start. The quicker we do this job, the sooner she does us all a favour and clears off to where the grass is greener. What's going on? Your mum said she saw Harrison driving a bus. A bus? He's in prison? She's definite. Oh, mum. Sarah says that you think you saw Harrison. Oh, Andy, I got such a shock. It was him. There was no mistake. All right, no, no, no. don't go upsetting yourself. Look, you can stay here for a bit. I don't want you being on your own tonight. Well, I'll have a sniff around and see what I can find out, but I can't have been her mum. Honest, they'd have told us. Extra shift. Well, you didn't need overtime when I bought your gear. It's over, Tony. Grow up. And I don't want my keys back. Discuss employees with anyone. The bloke's a convicted killer. I mean, do you not know what he did? He destroyed the lives of two families. Mark Harrison came to us with a clean record three months ago. I know what happened. He didn't try and hide anything, and I need driving. What, so you let him loose behind the wheelie of bloody boss? Mr. Hill, please leave the depot before I call security. I know you must be upset, but it's out of my hands. Oh, that's not right. It's not. Am I still on tonight? Do you want to be? Yeah, I need the extra. And you're on tonight. Great. Are you watching? Oh, for heaven's sake. I keep telling you, why don't you get a new pair of glasses? No, not yet. Go on. Oh, George, it's been a long day. And I've got a takeaway curry sitting in the microwave with my name on it. Can't you just fill it up? You fill it up halfway, you get better economy. Half the weight of a full tank in a car makes for better fuel consumption. No? No, not yet. I don't know, what with you and mullet? Oh, come on, that's it. That's good enough, yes. You could always take the seats out. That'd make it lighter. And you could always walk. I have no idea how to deal with people. What? People like you? 
I don't need you telling me how to behave. You're abrasive, you're insulting, you don't give a damn about anyone else's feelings. Get in the car! So bloody embarrassing sometimes. That's your answer to everything, is it? Run away, have a sword! Keep away from me. I'm walking. You're not. You're coming with me. I'm going to sort this out once and for all. I said, leave me. Shut up and hey, get in hey, the car! Hey, 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 come on. Calm down, you two. You're causing a scene. Mind your own business. Who asked you to poke your nose in? Just think about it for a minute, will you? If you carry on like this, the cashier will call the police, and that is when it gets complicated, all right? It's always you that misunderstands things. That exactly. is so will you, Now, will you... Please, miss, will you calm down, please, or I will call the police? Right. Go on, buzz off, the pair of you. Jack? What? I thought you were washing the car. I've left the keys in the ignition. That's how cars get nicked. Then you ought to be more careful then, shouldn't you? You can't hear that, can you? Hello, love. What? I might be going a bit deaf, but at least I haven't got water on the brain like some. Next Olympic gold medalist, me. Better be. The amount of time you spend at that swimming pool. I think it's the girls you're in training for, never mind the gold medal. Yeah, you're right. I have to beat them off left, right, and centre. You wish. <laughs> yeah, I wish. We're just gonna some what is it, Gwen? <laughs> Harrison got out on appeal a year ago. They overturned his conviction. And they never told us? I phoned the solicitors. They said the court didn't have to. What? He just walks back into everyone's life? Yeah. I suppose. Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's not right, is it? What about Bob Trusham? Did he know? No. I phoned him. He can't believe it either. I mean, I think it's knocked him for six. Well, I hate to think what it's going to do to your mum. I'm going, Mum, Dad. See you later. Um, I'll have to go as well. We won't let this rest, I promise you. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Wait, Jono! Hey, right, where'd you nick that? Along the drove, outside the pub. It's neat, isn't it? Come on, you plank, get in. We'll go for a bit of a burn, yeah? Have some fun. No, I can't. Oh, come on! No, I... I've got swim practice. <laughs> you lead a boring existence. It's time you stop playing Nemo and join the Sharks. Ooh. Hey! Hey, hey, one! There you go. Night then.
She saw me. Get her out. <laughs> Get her out. Get her out. So far, then, George. Well, Marsh took the call from uniform first thing this morning. Blimey, she's keen, isn't she? Yeah, she was in the office, as instructed. Yes, yes, all right, all right. <laughs> anyway, the bus is tacking me to stop at 11.24. And they only found it missing this morning. Well, it's the last bus of the evening around here, Jack. The crew take it back to the depot, clock off, go home. Night security don't know the schedules. What have we got? Not a lot. We'll spend Mark, but... Soccer has found these. A woman's watch. We haven't identified it yet. And this silver pendant. Looks like they came off in the struggle. Where'd you find them? Just over there. Six, seven and eight. There's some sort of inscription on the pendant, but it's too mangled to make anything out. Sockos think the car drove over it. All right. Let's see what the lab's come up with, then. Anything else? Yeah. There's a couple of scrapes in the tarmac over there and some shards of glass. There's also a light filament mixed up in the glass. Well, maybe it's headlamp glass. You know, it could be a road rage attack after a collision. There's no sign of damage to the front of the bus, so Socko's can't see any connection now. Well, keep tabs on what forensics come up with, will you? Who's that? Uh, that's the bus company manager. He's a bit shocked. We need to talk to him again. splattered on the windscreen there. It looks like there was a struggle. There were a couple of shirt buttons here and here, and a woman's shoe. Well, there's more than one bloke was involved if they took the conductress as well. Yeah, but why take them at all? Well, if we knew that, we would have solved the case, Miss Marples. <laughs> I don't think the driver would have done a runner with the night's takings. It'd hardly have been a king's ransom, would it? The driver's name is Mark Harrison. The conductress is Jessica Green, both single. <laughs> well, they didn't have return tickets, did they? Well, you don't know much about Harrison yet, except he had some trouble on a bus yesterday morning with some kids. I wonder if that's the same lot that thumped you. Yeah, could be. They did threaten to get even with the driver, and they'd be interested in any change there was. I tell you what, you go back to the Nick and trawl through juvenile records, see what you can find. George and I'll go down to the depot, see what we can dig up. Well, I, I still haven't got wheels, Gov. Oh, God, blimey, here you go. Look, take my car, will you? And when you get to the Nick, find Sergeant Brady and tell him to give you a pool car. Say I said so. Right. Be lucky to get a bicycle with this year's budget. Yeah, <laughs> if you did, it wouldn't have any wheels. your car. 
Great, thanks. There's been a run of incidents over the last few months involving gangs of kids, but I thought this might interest you. Four cars were reported stolen last night, probably joyriders. Two lads were seen dumping that one early as of this morning. Right. Get a truck down there. I want it brought into forensics. Tell Inspector Frost where I've gone, will you? Yeah. Yeah? You know, I reckon if you dive deep enough into the gene pool, you'll find that her and Jack are related. Oh, you're wrong there, Sarge. Chalk and cheese, those two. They hate each other. There's history between them. What do you mean? Well, it was before Jack got here. He was chasing a knife assault. He didn't wait for backup. Him and a young copper cornered the bloke, and the PC got himself wounded. Was it bad? Well, oh, lost three fingers. Marsh was on Jack's team. She accused him of dereliction of duty, among other things. Said he not only ignored procedure, but put officers' lives at risk. Internal inquiry cleared him, <laughs> but it put the brakes on his career. So, he ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> Did they always work together? No. Most buses don't have conductors these days, do they? Late night runs, dude. It's a way to pick up some extra hours, and I think... I think she wanted to keep out of the way of the ex-boyfriend for a while. Who was that? This Tony Woods bloke you mentioned, is it? Yeah. Was he ever violent towards her, you know? He had a temper. He let rip occasionally. Though, uh, Jesse wouldn't stand for that. So she, um, wasn't really bothered by him then? She could stand up for herself. Mm. I mean, you have to when you work on a bus these days, I tell you. Mm. These are her keys. I'll be taking them, just to let you know, all right? Of course. Uh, her car's still in the yard. George, anything? There's nothing much in the Harrison's locker. No keys or coat. Right. OK. Uh. We had a spot about her in the office yesterday. Who, oh, with Tony Woods? No. Oh. Who? Well, uh... Well, come on. Well, I can understand why the bloke got upset and, you know, might have a grudge against Mark Harrison. You will be sharing this information with me at some time today, will you? You're sorting out another car today, are you? As soon as I can, yeah. You've reported it to the police? Yeah, I have. But onto the insurance? I will. Yeah, but today we need two cars. Well, I can use your car for a few days. Well, I can drop you off at work and pick you up, but I need the car for the shopping. Well, we can do the shopping at the weekend. Yeah, but I need... I'll do the bloody car as soon as I can, all right? <sighs> Sorry. I'll speak to them. Uh, I was just thinking about getting home. It's all right, Mum. You stay with us for a couple of days. Everything's fine, I promise. Well, it looks like we're going to have to have a word with this heel bloke by the sounds of things. And the ex-boyfriend. Yeah. There's nothing here, Jack. No. Do you know what I don't understand? There's no handbag or purse, either in her locker, this car, or in the bus. Unless, of course, they tossed it. Make sure they search the area, will you? And in the meantime, to Miss Green's. The place been turned over, or is she naturally untidy? There's no false entry. Oh, blimey, some hefty bills here. Tell you what, if retail therapy was on the National Health, it really would be bankrupt. 
tell you another thing, there's no photographs here. No happy holiday snaps, no pictures of mum and dad or the cat, the dog. Or... There's no clues either. No? No sign of any suitcase? No. And she didn't take it to work if she was planning a trip. I'll check her bathroom. Frost. Oh, right. Yep, yeah, okay. Right. No, 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 no. You you stay there. Wait for me and George. Yeah. All right, get on. That was Miss Super Efficient Marsh. Says she's found something. Not her conscience, in case you're wondering. Jack. Hmm? Sharp spin in the bathroom. Ah. Oh. Drugs or medication? Better check with her GP. See if she was registered. Did you find the bathroom, Mr. Charlie? Oh, uh, yes. Thanks, Mrs. Atkins. I'll be on my way now. All right, what do you got? That was stolen last night from outside the King's Head pub on Longridge Road. Owner, a Michael Davies. A couple of kids were seen dumping it. Partial description fits the boys on the bus. Oh, uh -huh. right. Any evidence? No, not yet. OK. Right, well, I'll tell you what I got. The conductress had a bolshy boyfriend. But the driver, Mark Harrison, now, he used to be a lorry driver. And five years ago, the lorry that he was driving went out of control, mounted the pavement, and killed four people. Three adults and a baby. And he was allowed behind the wheel of a bus? Yeah, well, the law said that it made a mistake, and so they said he was innocent. Do we have the names of the families? Yes, we have. Linda Heal. She lost her husband, her daughter, and her granddaughter. And uh, Robert Trusham, his wife was killed. Would they know he was out? Well, no, not necessarily. I mean, they don't bother to tell us, do they? So why should they tell them? But anyway, here's a coincidence. There was a bloke called Heal who had a hissy fit in the bus depot yesterday. Yeah, we traced him. Well done, George. I tell you what, look, you go to Heal's place and check that out, and uh, George and I will go down and check out the Harrison place. All right? There's nothing in the bedroom, Jack. Beds are made. Fridge has a few packets of TV dinners. <laughs> well, it's home from home, then, isn't it? Some porn here, look. Well, a single bloke, over 21. No harm in a bit of home entertainment, is there? The trouble is, we still don't know who the target was. Jessica Green or Harrison? Or why either of them was taken? Jealousy, anger, revenge, an assault gone wrong. Well, I don't know. Search me. Your husband went down to the bus depot yesterday. That was my fault. No, don't be silly. When I saw Harrison, it was just like at the trial. He didn't bat an eyelid. It's not right, is it? It's not right. Can you tell me where your husband was last night? Andy. He was at adult education classes. He's studying at Denton Tech. What time to get home? Late, because of the car. What, it broke down? No, it was stolen. That's why I thought you were here at first, because of the car. It's me. Anyone home? I'm proper stuck. been around to see you yet? No. You? No. But they will. What do you think? I think he should burn in hell. 
thanks for not saying anything. I want their names. Well, those boys ain't at my school. Yeah, but they're around. And you know them. You tell me their names, or I go back in the house and talk to your mother. I don't know where they live. I only know their first names. the chuckling clown. Well, don't look so bloody miserable, then. I'm paying good money for this. Keith! Keith! Let's here! Come on! Come on! Come on in! <laughs> Where's the birthday girl? Girl! A girl. Harrison always maintained that his steering went when he hit those people. So that's why his appeal was successful. Well, the technical expert for the prosecution was found to have got it wrong on a similar case. And the bus company couldn't turn him down for employment. Yeah, exactly. Not unless they wanted the human rights brigade snapping at their heels. Well, I don't know where we are at the moment, whether or not it's a jealous boyfriend or angry family, you know, it's still wide open. Forensics? Oh, yes. Bad news, I'm afraid. That damaged pendant that we found was a medic alert. Now, the search team have found Jessica Green's handbag. It was about a, a mile from uh, where she was attacked. But inside, they found her insulin kit, which means that if she doesn't get two injections a day, she goes into a coma and dies. Right. I'll get the media onto it. Daily briefings from now on, Jack. Yes, sir. <sighs> ah, Jack, just the man. You owe a fiver for the canteen's monthly lottery fund. What, already? Overdue by three weeks. Oh, is that all? Well... Oh, hang about. Here, I've lost my wallet. Oh, come on, Jack. No, no, seriously, I have. I've lost it. Blimey. me. Ah. No, it's not here. I must have dropped it somewhere else. Oh, you don't get it out often enough to drop it, Jack. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, blimey. I bet it's been nicked. What? At the petrol station, that couple having a row. Well, it was a setup. She bumped into me, didn't she? I've been robbed. Oh, that was just about the time you told me to be careful, was it? Phone the bank, cancel the cards. Right. How many cards you got? Well, a few. And my warrant card. you've done anything to her, my barry will sort you up proper. Come on. Ah! Oh, let, let me, please. Oh, I'm 
sorry. Please. No, I do not have the numbers because they have been uh, stolen. No, I look, I haven't got the statements either because I'm not at home. Look, I've just told you, I haven't got the bloody numbers. Oh, God. I got Christian names for those boys on the bus. You haven't got the numbers of my credit cards on you by any chance, have you? Why? Oh, that's all right, never mind. Andy Neil's son, John, was at the bus stop with those boys who threatened the driver. Harrison was my driver on the bus. Yeah. Are you trying to say that you think that Heel's son may have something to do with the attack? No, it's doubtful. His parents never discussed the case with him. He was nowhere near the trial. He was only 11 at the time. He probably had no idea what Harrison looked like. Anyway, he was at a training session every night at the pool. Well, look, why don't you just go and double-check that he was having a training session at the pool that night? In the meantime, I'm going to have a word with this Trusham bloke whose wife was killed with the Heal family. Uh, Gov, just one more thing. Andy Heal's car was stolen last night while he was in class. Well, before the bus was nailed. Well, it was one of the files that Sergeant Brady gave me on stolen vehicles. And you didn't spot it? You, I missed it. I made a mistake. Well, we're all allowed to make a one of those at some time, aren't we? Don't worry, I'll check it. Well, no, I can do that. No. I want you to sit in your nice new car that Sergeant Brady gave you, and I want you to stake out Tony Woods's place for as long as it takes. I'm sorry. Hey. Do you know Bob Trusham? Only through the trial. Not socialising, only. Well, I see him around. Does this strike you as odd? That the very same night your car was stolen, a crime was committed against someone who hurt your family. Well, it was an added aggravation I didn't need. Have you found it yet? No. I haven't found Harrison or Jessica Green either. Listen, Inspector, the system let me and my family down. Harrison is guilty of murder as far as I'm concerned. But we've had enough tragedy in our lives. I wouldn't do anything to make matters worse. You didn't get back till gone one o'clock in the morning. That gave you ample time. You also have a motive. You can check and double check as much as you like. I was in class till late, then I searched for my car, then I thumbed the lift home. I didn't want to phone my wife and wake her up. I'm sorry to hear about the girl, though. All right, thank you. and the police were around my house looking for you. I clocked you on the bus mouth enough to the driver. Are you playing Judas and grossing us up, John? I'm warning you, aren't I? I gave them false names. You own me, Lewis. You remember that. Keep your head down. Do we subcontract to the gas companies? It's hard graft. He's a good worker, Bob Trusham. 
Does he ever talk about his wife? He never got over the accident. Fills his spare time with volunteer work. Oh, yeah? Who's that for? Uh, the kids' clubs. He coaches the under-16s. Gives the lads something to do. <laughs> Keeps them off the street. I was the luckiest bloke in the world when she married me. She straightened me out. You needed straightening out, did you? I did time 12 years ago. Oh, yeah? For what? I got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Petty theft and dud checks, mostly. I'd have remembered. It wasn't here. Mm. When I got out, that's when I met Maggie. She breathed new life into me, she did. You have strong feelings about Harrison, then. I hate him. Maggie was 26 when he killed her and the others, a young mum and a baby. The bastard should have rotted in the nick. Have you heard him? No. I learned my lesson. I try and stop the kids getting into the same sort of trouble I did when I was their age. And where were you last night? Football training with the kids' second team till about 10. And, and then the pub for a couple of hours. I'm not good on my own, so the pub's got a sports channel I watch there. And then, um, bed, alone. That's very difficult to prove. Unless evidence tells us otherwise. All right, go on. And I want you down Denton, Nick, tonight to make a statement. Don't make me have to come and find you. Frost. Right, what have we got, George? Over here. Police surgeon's on his way. <laughs> Who the hell is that? That's Charlie the Chuckling Clown. Well, he ain't got much to laugh at now, has he? Hmm? Who would kill a clown? Well, I don't know. Punch and Judy, maybe? <laughs> this isn't a matter for levity, Jack. No, all right. Now, they're doing a post-mortem now, so I'll know a bit more later on. Now, uh, press and television are highlighting Jessica Green's medical condition. We can only hope that the kidnapper didn't know she was diabetic and that this nudges his conscience. Hmm. Well, if he did know, that means he had serious intent to cause her harm. Yes. Uh, Jack, mm -hmm. um, your wallet was found in the street and handed in. Empty. Apart from its warrant card, oh. thankfully. Mm. Count yourself extremely lucky, Jack. Sir. As for your lost credit cards... This is Mr Brock from your bank. Hmm? Inspector. Oh, how did you do? We're keen to work closely with Denton CID on this case. All right, well, what do you have in mind? Well, the best way to catch the card thieves is to have one of your cards active. What they do is they phone a charity, offer a small donation. If that's accepted, then they know the card is still valid. That way we keep tabs on them. And hopefully we can apprehend them. All right, well, let's nab them before my name's all over Denton as a big spender. Oh, I'll never live that down. We've authorised a temporary card for you, Inspector, and my people should have already given you a new pin. Ah, oh, <clears throat> yes, yes, they have. There it is, look, 5199. That's Lofty Parker. You know him? Yeah. Lofty's an old lag. Just petty stuff. In and out of the nick all his life. What was the cause of death? Fractured skull. He may have fallen or he may have been hit. It's a bit difficult to tell at the moment. But a blunt force trauma like this could be the result of being in a fight. There's bruising to his face. No. No, Lofty was harmless. He wouldn't be involved in violence. No, someone's cracked him one. Well, there was evidence of, a, of an old head injury from a few years back. That wouldn't have helped. I'll let you know when I finish my test. Yeah, right. What did he have on him when they brought him in? 
Uh, mobile phone, house keys, a ring, and a suitcase full of clowns' tricks. <laughs> well, let's hope he raised a smile for someone before this happened. Relationship with Jessica Green. Yes. When did you last see her? About three days ago. I'm a rep. I was away for a couple of days. I had no idea this had happened. I didn't. I was going to take her out tonight. We'll always go out when I get back. We were going out regular. We were going to get married. Put the case back on the bed, please. Put the case back on the bed. Mr. Woods, either you took these from Jessica Green's flat, or you're a cross-dresser trying to fit into a size 10. The bus was clean before the last run of the night, but we found a sliver of rubber on the floor. We think it might be from one of the attacker's shoes, trainers, most likely. We found it very near to some stress marks on the floor which indicate torsion on the rubber. What you mean as if in a struggle? That is a possibility. Now, these blood splatters are definitely Harrison's. We know that from his medical and prison records and it's the same blood we found in this car. Are you trying to tell me that this car was used in the kidnap? I don't know, but the lab confirms that the fibers we found in it have Harrison's blood on them. running out for this girl so I'm splitting up the team DC Harris and his lot will be doing the leg work on Lofty Parker's death DC Simpson here and her team will be double checking everything on Jessica Green and Harrison and those kids right George there's now a definite connection between this car stolen by kids and Mark Harrison but there's no other forensic evidence. No, they could have used, you know, plastic sheeting or even those black bin liners. Right, so what else have we got? Sex. How much? What's up, free? <laughs> Jessica Green was sleeping with Mark Harrison. These photos were found at Tony Wood's flat, along with her clothes and various other bits and pieces. Tony says he bought Jessica a digital camera, but there's no sign of it. 
No, it's not at Jessica's or Mark Harrison's flat. Was, um, was Woods uh, part of a threesome? Not as far as we know. Oh. She seems to be bed hopping casually enough. If she was sleeping around, then there could be plenty of others who might want to hurt her. These girls don't help themselves, do they? Yeah, well, Sergeant Marsh is right. If Jessica Green is promiscuous, this could throw the investigation wide open. No, it doesn't. This girl is a victim. She's ill, she needs medical treatment, and we're all she's got. Now, my main concern is finding out who might be the prime suspect, and it's Woods. Woods had the key to her flat. He took all the clothes he bought her. He's jealous and he has a temper. Is there any way you can place him in that stolen car? No, sir. But he did have plenty of time to get back from his trip and do it. And there's no forensic evidence other than Harrison's blood on those fibres? No. The photos are all I've got. But it does give him a motive. Now, look here, I can't get a solicitor down here for another few hours, so I need your permission to interview him now. On what grounds? Oh, what ground? Well, it's a matter of urgency to avoid any further risk to the victims, especially Jessica Green. I agree. But uh, if he is involved, do you believe he had an accomplice? Well, yeah, he must have done. I mean, he couldn't have got both of them off the bus on his own. Right. Right, thank you. Take the photos. Jack, um, hmm? that uh, interview. Don't overstep the mark. Gossip at the bus depot says you hassled her a lot and that she dumped you a few weeks ago. Not true. Must have really hurt when she started seeing Harrison. That was ages ago. That was all over and done with. That was before me and her got together. How would you know that? Were you following her? Maybe you got a violent temper and she was scared of you. Who took these pictures, Tony? Was that you? Me? Mm. Yeah. You. Do you like getting involved in a, you know, in the threesome? A little bit hanky-panky? No. You got the pictures? I wouldn't. That's not my thing. Oh. Maybe it was hers. Maybe it was her suggestion, and that's why you hurt her. No, that's all wrong. You you shut up. Someone took these pictures. You bought her the camera. Where is it? Are there pictures of you two together? Is that what the problem is? I'm not into that kind of stuff. Yeah, you knew she was sleeping with someone else. Oh, come on, Tony. Admit it. Hmm? You saw the photographs. And you threw a wobbly. You got someone to help you, and you took her somewhere. Hmm? That's what you did. I didn't hurt her. I wouldn't. I love her. Where did you take her? Hmm? And there was someone else involved, wasn't there? <laughs> hmm? I don't know, honest. I didn't do anything. I never knew she took pictures with other bloods. I loved her. I only found that stuff when I went to her flat. Where's the camera? I don't know. If we find the camera, there may be a picture in it of the bloke who's got her. I don't know. 
Oh, listen. Look, you've got to find her. Please. Find her. For me. No, it's not him. Not in a month of Sundays. You can't be sure that wasn't an act. All right, then you bang him up for a couple more hours and do all the paperwork. We're missing something, George. What about Woods? Hmm? Woods? Oh, he's all mouth and no trousers. Wimp of the First Order. Marsh is down there now, sucking her thumb, trying to work out whether it was all an act. I tell you what, have you got Jessica Green's work timetables there? Hmm. Right. Look at this. See, overtime, overtime, extra shifts, more overtime, which you'd need the overtime to pay for those shopping bills, wouldn't she? And I'm surprised she could find enough time to spend the money. Yeah. But look, 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 look. The ad hoc extra shifts. You know, as and as and when she could get them. Nothing regular, see? Look, no set dates. Look here. Here. Days off, weekends. And three late night runs, look, each night, different driver. She may have been bonking Mark Harrison when she had the time and the energy, but only her supervisor would have known exactly what bus she was on that night. And? Oh, I let him walk. Oh. So, Harrison must have been the target all along. Yes. Yeah, this was planned. The route, the time and the place. I mean, talk about being unlucky in love. She was on the wrong bus with the wrong bloke at the wrong time. accepted this transfer because after this case I'm getting out while I still have a life. Better pay, better hours and no more drowning in paperwork. Oh yeah, good for you. And before I become one of those coppers who can't sleep because somewhere along the line I might have missed something. Like me you mean? Exactly like you. Coppers lose sleep because they care. You can't win them all. Not every case. I can try. Yeah. Why don't we ever talk about Auntie Joan and the baby or Grandad? Well, I don't know, son, you just don't. If you go on about it, I don't know, it just hurts more and more. That's just to deal with it and put it behind you. Yeah, but if you don't talk about it... Drop it, son, will you? There's a good lad. What? So if something's difficult, we don't say anything. Why don't anyone do anything about bosses like Harrison? Because it doesn't get us anywhere. Well, it helps, it has to. What's wrong with him? John, don't speak to your father like that. His bloody family is dysfunctional, you know that. You should have done something. <laughs> To him. Nothing. Well, you must have said something. I didn't say a word. What's going on? Not now, Mum. Not now. Well, what's all the shouting? Oh, Mum, not now, please. Stop with the two of you. Here of all places. I just hope no one in this family has been stupid enough to do anything about Harrison. We are not those sort of people. This is not what this family is about.
Oh. Jack? Yeah? Statement. The Mrs. Helen Campbell. She thinks she killed Lofty Parker. Ooh, well, there's a result. And Parker's last two gigs a Mrs. Joan Atkins and a Mrs. Trish Monroe. Monroe? Mm hmm. Barry Monroe's wife. Well, the car salesman. Oh, there's a wheeler and dealer, if ever I've heard of one. So you were at Mrs. Monroe's children's party? Yes. That's where I saw Mr. Parker, is it? Mm hmm. Did he attack you? No, he frightened me. Well, he tried to grab me. I think... I struggled. I don't remember very much. And then I went into town and... And for some reason, he was there again. And I don't understand why. I panicked. We found traces of Parker's makeup on your clothing. I think I hit him at the house. <laughs> Did you confront him in the alley? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> Inspector, Mrs. Campbell came here voluntarily. I've spoken to her family GP. She suffers from a rare condition called coulrophobia. You are? It's the fear of clowns. I beg your pardon? Coulrophobia. It invokes panic attacks, temporary amnesia, sweating, nausea, even terror in some cases. Mrs. Campbell's condition is well documented. Well, not round here, it isn't. Maybe my mullet phobia is a medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if she did clob a lofty in that alleyway, she's still responsible for his death, Jack. Yeah, I know, but I think she's just a scared housewife, George. I mean, let her sort herself out, and then we'll talk to her again if needs be. Meanwhile, give her a caution and send her off home. I don't think she's going to do a runner. We found a list of Lofty's flat of all the kids' parties they'd done recently. All right. And this is all his swag, is it? Mm-hmm. And most of the women who hired Parker only realised their pieces were missing days, even weeks later. They thought they'd simply lost their jewellery. This one ring was found in his pocket. Mm-hmm. And does this bring us any closer to finding who rolled him? Well, the kids' party before Mrs. Monroe's was Mrs. Atkins. And when we interviewed her, she realised she was missing two rings. She inherited them from her mother. Luckily enough, she had them photographed for insurance purposes. Mm hmm And what about this other woman? What's her name? Mrs. Monroe? She said she isn't missing anything. Not missing anything? That's odd. Why would Parker change his mode of operation? I don't know. Unless Mrs. Campbell interrupted him. Because Parker was upstairs, Jack. There is no question about that. What would happen if Mrs. Monroe found out that Parker had lifted some of her stuff and she told her husband and he went after the thief? What about that? I told you nothing was stolen. Uh, we want you to be doubly sure, Mrs. Monroe. Then if anybody tries to flog anything on the street, we can eliminate any possible theft from you. Do you think Mrs. Campbell was involved in Mr. Parker's death? <laughs> the clown. Is that his name? Yes. Even a clown has a mother and father. Well, she was hyped up over something. Yeah, maybe. But it was probably an accident. What was? His death. Who told you how he died? This is a very nice picture. Very nice ring you're wearing in it. 
Mm -hmm. In fact, it's very similar to this one. found that ring on the dead man. Jack. Hmm? Mrs. Atkins' ring. Mrs. Monroe, would you mind telling me how another woman's piece of stolen jewellery ended up in your jewellery box? Oh, she phoned her husband once she knew that Parker had cherry-picked her jewellery and... He went after him, found him, gave him a push, and he fell, and, well, Bob's your uncle. Any CCTV? No, it was too far down the alley. And then he took the jewellery back to his wife, not realising that Parker had stolen it from someone else earlier. Huh. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, she didn't realise that uh, amongst it all was... Mrs. Atkins' ring. A uh, deliberate killing, do you think? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, he couldn't have known that Lofty Parker had an old head injury, could he? Well, by law, he's still responsible for the death. Yes, I know. Jack. Yes, excuse me, sir. I found the girl. Oh, right. She's in a hyperglycemic coma. Is she going to pull through? Give her less than a 50-50 chance. Is there any sign of violence? There's some bruising. There are restraint marks on her wrists and cuts to her feet. Two fingernails were torn on her right hand. Has she been scratching something? Was there any sign of sexual assault? No. Well, that's one small mercy, anyway. Have you got the clothes that she was wearing? Did she escape or was she released? Well, only she can answer that. Maybe she was the primary target after all. And Harrison was just trying to protect her. Making up for past sins, do you mean? Well, being responsible for causing injury stays with some people. Was it really? Got a key here. Yeah? Mm. Too small for a front door key. Yeah. No, I don't know what that is. Let's bag it up, anyway. Well, we're not going to get any forensics off her. Not now the uh, hospital has cleaned her up. No. We'll have to see if we can get something off these. Oh, man's jacket. No need to guess who this belonged to. Oh, it's pretty scuffed. Oh, bit of dried blood there. Huh? It's got some grease and oil on it. I tell you what, we better not make a pig's ear of this, so better send it straight down to the lab. Wait a minute. Hmm. Oh. What does that say? Oh, it looks like a manufacturer's name tag. San... Santola. Jacket must have been made in South America. No, no, not according to this label. It is. It said made in China. Oh, that's a surprise. Anyway, it's something to go on. Let me have another look at that little key we had a minute ago. Ah, there you go. Frost. Yes? Right. Right, OK, thank you. Forensic. Tell you what, get back down there, Nick. Get hold of those photos. I'll meet you there. Inspector, that broken glass and bulb filament, it's industrial. We found fragments of three halogen bulbs. It's a floodlight. A floodlight? What do you mean, like that one, you mean? Yes, exactly. Garages, building sites, road maintenance, they'd all use them in one form or another. 
Yeah, but you'd need mains power for one of these things, wouldn't you? Not if you've power pack, you don't. Something bugging me about those photos. Where are they? There. What? Yeah. I'll show you in a minute. If I'm right. Yes. Yes. He's both trying to hide his face. That is not Harrison. Well, how can you be sure? Oh, look. He's got a wedding ring on and he hasn't. Well, if it's not Harrison, it's not Tony Woods. And who is it? This is the padlock from her locker, right? Yeah. This is her key. I bet you they don't fit. No, I thought not. Someone needed to break into her locker and search it before we did. Him. Him. We had an affair. It was just a bit of fun. I broke into her locker, changed the lock. I need to see if there are any more photos. And were there? I found a camera. Yeah, there were other pictures. He's deleted them. Poor oh, Jess, I had no idea she was a diabetic. Yeah, well, the secrets we keep, eh? My wife, she... I told her I was working late. I had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with what happened to Jess. Nothing, I swear. Well, whether you did or you didn't, I won't be able to save your job. Whether you can save your marriage, that's up to you. Go on. All right, Marsh, get a couple of bodies to go down to Andy Heal's workplace. See if any of his workshop floodlights are either broken or missing. Already done. Gas Company 2. None of their crews have reported any of theirs missing or broken. Uh, patrol cars just spotted half a dozen hooded kids heading for the Midvale shopping centre. Descriptions match your boys on the bus. Oh, they're probably blitzing the place. All right. Tell Uniform to hold off till we get there. I've got two of them here. They're rummaging about in a sports bag. I've got two white males. One of them's a boy from the bus. All exits are covered. They might have hammers or knives in the bags. All right. We don't want anybody getting hurt. Come on, let's go and nab them. Gov, wait for backup. I saw the little kids. And I ain't telling no fibs. It's a sorry sight to see their plight. The parents are crying. The children are dying. So make their lives better. Wait, this a red letter. Day. Hey. Hey, don't go away. Make it real. That's not a big deal. A few coins in the fountain. That's not a big mountain. So you got some heart. And make sure you part with a cash donation. We're a caring nation. Yeah, all right. OK, there you go, then. A tenner? Cheers, mate. That's all right. You're welcome, son. And by the way, you're nicked. All right, come on. Hey, come and get these two. Go on. Take them away, will you? Hi, right, Jack. Um, how is everything? Well, I'll let you know in a moment, sir. <clears throat> George. When you're ready. Well, the lads are being a bit tight-lipped, but uh, Lewis there admits to threatening Mark Harrison on the bus that morning. And it's fibres from his jacket, the one with Harrison's blood on it, that were found in the stolen car. Yeah. Well, then they are involved. Ah, well, no, not quite, you see. They admit to stealing a car from a pub car park, taking it on a joyride, then trashing the car. So I can't see how it can be them. Well, uh, what about the blood? Well, there was a scuffle on the bus that morning and some of Harrison's blood ended up on Lewis's jacket. So, we are no closer finding Harrison. Well, if I get the same story from the other lad, no. 
Other than car theft, can we charge them with obtaining money by false pretenses? No, well, yes, no, no, this is genuine, sir. Mm. They were collecting money for the children's hospice. Which, incidentally, <laughs> contribution would be helpful, sir. Oh, yes. Mm. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> even I managed 20, sir. Thank you. Keep me informed, then, Jack. Yes, sir. Ah, Shriek, just the man. Make sure this gets back to the school, will you? But do a whip round the station first. No coins, only notes. I'm busy. Well, make yourself unbusy for ten minutes. Nothing like doing a bit of good for those in need. Heavenly rewards and all of that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll probably have to borrow a tenner to get in the place at all. Oh, that's all right, as long as you don't borrow off me. Chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> that's true. Hey, don't forget Mr Mullet. And no matter what he says, he has not made a donation. Right, he's suffering from false memory syndrome. Sad case. Go on, off you go. <clears throat> all right. Right, George. Well, it's the same story. Except for one thing. Mm. They gave John Heal a lift that night. John Heal lied about those boys' names. Yeah. He also said that he was at swimming practice that night. Maybe he wasn't. No, I, I double-checked. He was there. From 7.30 till just after 11. He can't have got from the pool to the site of the bus attack by 11.24. And he can't be in two places at once. Either he was at swim practice, seen by witnesses, or he wasn't. Yeah, now, those boys said they dropped heel about half a mile from his dad's night college at about seven. Now, supposing he had a spare set of car keys, that would mean that his dad's car theft isn't. And he would have had help. Father and son taking the law into their own hands. Yes. Harrison was the target. And he would have needed somewhere familiar to hide both Harrison and Jessica Green. Forensics said the clothes had been kept somewhere damp and had grease on them. Pump house at a swimming pool. George, anything? Another week, see, no? How do you expect him? No one can get down here without a pass key. That won't hide anyone. It's only me and the engineer that have got a key, so. Engineer? Wouldn't be a gas engineer by any chance, would it? No, the filtration system. Mm -hmm. And you're certain that John here was training here last Tuesday night? Your lady sergeant asked me twice, all right? Yes, every night, absolutely. I'd swear to it. All right. Well, George. Hang on. Hmm? He did break down last Tuesday night. You what? Yeah, for an hour. We cleared the pool at nine o'clock. For an hour. here I told you yeah you got a lift in you arrived early and you left early you hung about long enough to get noticed and then you scarpered but one thing you didn't notice was they closed the pool that night and there's another thing you didn't notice 
See that little bit out of that shoe there? I've got that little bit. And that proves that you were on that bus that night. Come on, talk to me, son. I want to talk to me, Dad. Oh. So it was you and your dad who attacked Harrison, was it? You've got to be joking, Dad. Oh, I didn't think it was. Jack, yeah. We just had a call. Marsh got uniform to check out the football club. They use half a dozen battery-powered lamps for their juniors, and one of them is broken. Thank you, Sergeant. So it was you and Trusham, was it? We didn't know about the girl. She wasn't supposed to be on the bus. It was Harrison. I just wanted to teach him a lesson. Well, a lot of lessons have been learned here today, haven't they? Show me where you took them. She was in there, and Harrison over there. What is this place? It's a disused junction station, part of an old storage facility. We've been rerouting the gas mains across Denton for two years now. Well, evidence that somebody's been in there. Empty water bottle, but nothing else. Trusham must have stripped him. He's not here. Well, where the bloody hell is he? I don't know, honest. This is where we brought them, right here. Bob said he was going to let the girl go. He promised. Even before we learnt she was sick, he was really worried about her. He promised me we'd get some insulin for her. Go on, take him away. I must have thought that the boy wouldn't hold out, and he's moved them. for what you did. No, no, please, go, no! I didn't mean to hurt those people. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry! Do you remember that metal name tag that we found on Jessica Green? Uh, Santola. Well, I did some research and I found there were two companies with that name. One was an earth-moving company and the other one was a lift blanket supplier that went out of business two years ago. I mean, what is a lift blanket? They're things they hook up to protect the inside of lifts. Right. Well, we'll bear that in mind. Meanwhile, um, now let's just get back to this. What's that there? Yeah, that's the old Denton Equity Insurance Building. That's in the middle of a brownfield site. We shut down a gas main there a few months ago because the whole site's due for redevelopment. Let's have a look at that. How did you kill them? Tell me. The steering failed. I swear! Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I tried to use my mobile. I, I couldn't get a signal. It cut off. You took your eyes off the road! I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That's not I'm surprised you found this place. I was helped by a dying girl. Have you killed him? I've got his confession on tape. It's called Justice, Mr. Frost. 
It's called murder if you've killed him. All right, George, go on, take him away. No sign of Harrison down there. No, no, here. Yeah. All right. George, hold it a minute. He's up there. He's up there. Oh. Oh. Thank God he's still alive. It's too far down. I'll tell you what, if I can get on that one, I can get to him. It's okay, police. Don't move. All right. <laughs> Jack, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> Mark, it's all right, Mark. Now, listen to me, can you move? I can't. I can't. It's my leg. All right, take it easy. Take it easy. I'm going to come down to you. All right? You want me a minute? Oh, how, do you know? how far down is it? Ten floors. It's a long way down. You want to get a lift? Won't he? Well, I've recommended bail, but the rest is not up to me. Well, I hadn't said anything in the beginning. None of this would have happened. No, no, no. You can't blame yourself. Trusham's been planning this for weeks. He just manipulated John to help him. system in place where victims' families are told when people like Harrison are released. Well, at least the girl survived. Yeah, well, that's some sort of justice, I suppose. Uh, Jack, um, mm -hmm. you're back. They've caught up with the credit card thieves. Uh, Seven and a half thousand pounds worth. Oh, well, small change after what we've been through. Yes. Uh, by the way, uh, how did they get your PIN number? Ah, <clears throat> well, you see, I've got so many of the damn things that I, um... You wrote them down and kept them in your wallet. That's what I like to see. Order out of chaos. You should never have gone into that lift shaft. You get results, Jack, but nothing's worth dying for. That's what we do. Anyway, I had good backup. Thank you. Yeah, well... I'm sorry about Harrison. Yeah, well... We did our best. 
And as you say, you can't win them all. Anyway, I would just like to wish you luck in your new job. Annie. You still bend the rules, Jack. And one of these days, it will be your undoing. Yes?